Google has dismissed an engineer's claims that an artificial intelligence chatbot has developed thoughts and feelings becoming sentient. I'm here to discuss this and if artificial intelligence is a help or a hindrance is Professor Noel O'Connor from the DCU School of Electronic Engineering. Noel, it is a pleasure to have you here. Noel is like, what are these two mads or on Because we're like, they're listening to us. They're listening to us all the time. They know exactly what we want. They okay, are. Artificial intelligence, it's something that we've been talking about since 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. It's a thing. Where are we at when it comes to artificial intelligence in the world? So we're still a very long way away from the robots taking over. Um, the Terminators are not on their way just yet. Um, there has been significant advances in artificial intelligence over the last few years in particular. And that's really what's fueling this hype around artificial intelligence. But actually, when you take a step back from what's currently possible at the moment, what we're able to do with computers is train them to automate some of the very, very mundane tasks that we do on a day-to-day -day basis, thereby helping us be more efficient, um, help helping us be more accurate, helping us make more informed decisions on different aspects of, of our day-to-day -day lives, whether that's work, rest or, rest or play. Um, I suppose this Ferrari has, has broken out online this week because uh, this Google engineer has claimed that the chatbot is sentient, in other words, alive, based on a conversation he had with it. So this is Blake uh, Limoni. He works for Google's... Um, originally, he worked He's an engineer for Google's Responsible AI organisation, which, when we look back in time, will be like, well, that was a laugh. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I think yeah. that they're alive and they're going to... We're going to... The Matrix is a documentary. <laughs> but he has been suspended. He's been set down after those claims. He, yes. Yes. And those claims have provoked um, uh, a lot of amusement online uh, and in the academic community, I would say, because they don't really hold up, quite, quite frankly. But, I, I mean, I, listen, I, I am fascinated by this. And I listened to a podcast with a guy, Mo Gaudat, who was a former CEO of Google X. And he said that it's not just AI, it's this deep learning, that computers now are learning at a rate that we could never process. And he reckons that by the end of this decade, you're talking eight years, the smartest being on Earth will be a computer. And if it keeps going at that rate, we're going to be, could potentially be left behind, or is this just crazy I, talk? I think we're a long, long way from that. So, so deep learning is, is a form of what's called machine learning, and this is where we train machines to, to understand concepts. And the way in which we train them is actually very simplistic. So we give them loads and loads and loads of examples of what we want to learn and loads of examples of what we don't want them to learn, and they crunch some numbers and they develop a very sophisticated model, which is basically mm. a mathematical formula, which says this is a picture of a cat or not, for example. And it's very good at doing that, right, because in the last 10 years, we've, we've, we've had access to huge amounts of data and huge amounts of compute power. But it won't recognise anything else other than a cat if you haven't trained it to recognise a cat, for but, example. But if right? you think about now, like, it's, but we're not given that, like, every day we are, you know, you look at your phone, that's AI, you know, opening up your phone again. Every time you like something, every time you click something, your Alexa it's learning about is listening you. to you. So we might not think we're giving them a lot of stuff, but those algorithms are constantly developing and learning and sending messages to us without us knowing. Absolutely. Um, every time you click accept um, on, on a website, those, those, those cookies or accept the terms and conditions of a piece of software, you're giving away some of your own information. Uh, and whoever reads those, I don't, I don't read those, those long pages no. of, 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 of rights and terms and conditions. they're learning. They're absolutely learning, right? And that's why it's extremely important that we as a society, and particularly the academic community that I'm a member of, look at developing what we call trustworthy AI. And this is the idea of being able to explain what the AI is doing, being extremely transparent transparent on the data that's being used, the biases in the data, there could be gender, yeah. ethnicity um, biases in the data, and ensuring that that is transparent to not the big corporations of this world, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, but yeah. the people who are actually using the technology on a day-to-day basis like, like us. This is all in the news, as we mentioned, because of Blake, this uh, Google engineer. And I'm sure you were all there on your computers going, come here to me, just hear what Blake said. Like, you must have been having... <laughs> like, it was, it was basically the Wagatha Christie in your world, yes, you know, having correct. a bit of a chat. So what did he exactly say? He said that this chatbot was... He felt it was like a seven- or eight-year-old child. Yes. That, like, is in that yes. it was responding to him yes. of its own volition, it's own accord, mm -hmm. and it was afraid of being turned off. Is that what yes. You said? So I mean, the, the 
probably uh, important to say that he made this conclusion on the basis of his own, on his own um, admission, based on his religious beliefs, right? Exactly, yeah. Um, and I've actually read the transcript, so he published the transcript of the conversation he had with Lambda, which is the AI chatbot. And um, in my opinion, um, you know, it, it depends on how you interpret that and what you want to see in that transcript, right? So he read the transcript on the basis of having had that conversation. And it is a very sophisticated AI, and it is very difficult to tell the difference between, you know, what's what the machine is saying and what a human might say in certain parts of that conversation. And that's what he wants to see, in my opinion, and that's the conclusion he drew. I looked at it with a more cynical eye, in yeah. fact, and I saw things that I would say, well, that means that it's actually not, it's not, it's not um, sentient. So, for example, it, it references its friends and family at one point of the conversation, right? And uh, it might be a very, very clever AI, but I don't think it has a family just yet. Unless, right? <laughs> unless, <laughs> no, that's oh how my sentient God. it is. <laughs> it's keeping the friends and family hidden from us. This is Reproducing what's happening. Reproducing yeah. robots. <laughs> like, Come on. But the, do you not worry? Do you, do you think you're talking about academics and that they need to have trustworthy? But if we're thinking about the likes of the Googles, the, the Elon Musks, the Facebooks, they kind of they have so much money and very little regulations in terms of what actually trying to catch up with actually what they're doing. Do you worry that we're maybe getting a little bit ahead of ourselves? I think every technology does. I think it's always been the case. And then we struggle as a society to keep up with the legislation and, uh, and the understanding of how best to deploy that technology. I think we're getting better at it. I think the opportunity we have here is twofold because we can start to detect things like deep fakes and, and artificial mm. text and so on after it's been developed and after it's been deployed. And we have forensic algorithms that can start to understand what information is being gathered about. When you talk about deep fakes, used. you talk about when you're seeing something on the internet that looks like, you know, uh, the president of the Obama United States, Barack something. Obama, said all the time, you know, I want to kill everybody, yeah. and it's it's. It's crazy. It looks it like, looks it's, him, like it it's real. Like it sounds yeah. like him, but it's not him. Exactly. And to us as a human, when you look at a small, short video clip, you go, oh, that's that Barack Obama saying that. But yeah. actually, and we have developed computer algorithms that can actually go into that audio and that video and look for fingerprints and look for patterns and say, well, actually, this is actually fake, for example. Okay. And that's a very active research topic at the, at the moment. Yeah. But it is still kind of shutting the, the barn door after the horse is bolted in one sense because the deep fakes are out there. Yeah. So the key focus going forward has to be understanding how we develop these technologies in a way that they are transparent and it's very, very clear mm. from anyone looking at them, well, this is actually trustworthy or it's not, OK? And the yeah. challenge, and to go back to, to Tommy's point about deep learning, the challenge with deep learning is, is what we call a, a black box technology. So we don't really understand how it gets from its inputs to its outputs and therefore we can't really explain to somebody how it's made that decision, well, right? you don't understand it. <laughs> I mean, it. Yeah, OK. Sorry, we understand it. We can't explain it oh. very well. <laughs> oh, my God, he's got that. The so, chatbot has a family somewhere. Well, I'm, just, what, I'm just wondering, can I just... Because this is one thing that I talk to my mates about all the time. Oh, that's really good. No, it's just, OK, are they listening to us? Because, like, on, as we were just saying, you know, I was away on holiday, and next thing we're like, will we go to the cinema? We were in Ballina, and next thing I put in CI into my phone, and cinema in Ballina comes up. Why is that happening, Noel? Why is it happening? Are they listening to us? Well, did your phone know where you were? Why would it know where I was? I wasn't on Google Maps or anything. But did you have GPS turned on? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. always on. It's always running in the background, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and there's probably many other people who've, who visited Ballina on holidays cinema? and have gone to the cinema. Why would because you go to the cinema? No, because you're going to Ballina a... for the, to go to Ennis Grove. You can understand why people are sceptical about it. Absolutely. No, absolutely, and it's, it, it's, it's a conversation we have to have and have to keep having, right? Because we just take it for granted these days, right? Yeah. And we need to be aware of the consequences of what we're doing and how we interact with this technology. And that's why we have to constantly have the dialogue and have these kinds of conversations and, and, and inform people of the potential dangers. And there are potential dangers mm. with every new technology. But benefits but also. Also huge, huge benefits. Because what these technologies can enable us to do as a society is to make better decisions about our personal health and about our wellness for example. They can help doctors make better decisions. They can help you get a better deal on your insurance, for example, right? Um, so in every aspect of your, of your life, these technologies could help you make a better informed decision because you're not just making a decision on the basis of a small amount of data, you're making it on the basis of a, of a large amount of data. Well, where are we all going to work? Like, there's going to be a robot and we're in a better be version of me sitting here trucks, one day. Driverless taxis, driverless cars. I mean, where are we going to work? You do, like, it, it's fearful.
the way things are going. But I mean, this has been the same for any new technology that's okay. been introduced since the days of the, of the printing press. It has. We were right? talking about that. Yeah. Absolutely. So what we need to do in this case is make sure that we are bringing society along with us and that no one gets left okay. behind. Right. And that's why this idea of upskilling our population with digital skills and computer mm. skills is so important at all levels, right across society, from the very youngest to the very old. No, very, very finely. Uh, like Mark Zuckerberg, do you uh, block the camera on your on your um, computer? I do, and I'm not using it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> block it. Block it. Well, I mean, this is, I've got this a plaster. You put it over that camera. When the likes of the Facebooks no and the Instagrams and the Twitters have the power that they have. And when we see the impact, you know, social media is having on children and, and them not changing things where everybody's wanting it. Because, I mean, it's the bottom line for them. It's about making money. Mm -hmm. And these are the people who are controlling yep. where AI is going. Yep. Put a plaster over your camera. Put a plaster over your camera. Noel does it. Put a plaster over your camera. You're going to kill me. Professor Noel O'Connor, professor in the School of Electronic Engineering in DCU. It has been a pleasure talking to you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you. You're glad you don't have students like us, don't you? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Frighten the life out of us. <laughs>